Hello, it's Spence, the evil genius, with your WordPress tip of the day. Hey guys, today I'd like to introduce you to a very, very powerful, yet free plugin that's available in the WordPress repository. It's one of those that's sort of a must-have for any freelance web designer, whether you're working on your own site or those of your clients. Now, the reason it's so important to have it in your toolkit is it performs the three critical tasks that you're gonna be doing quite frequently, especially when learning how to be an entrepreneur, running your freelance business on WordPress. Backing up, copying, and cloning. Now, this does that in its own unique way. It's not a third-party service like some of the other stuff we've reviewed. Instead, it's an actual plugin that works on any site. As a result of this, it does require a little bit more experience to get set up, but if you follow along with this video, you shouldn't have any trouble. Let's start out. I've got a demo site set up here using a responsive LabZip child theme, and you'll notice that it's at training.1wdclient.com. That's the URL. I've also set up, which I'm going to show you in a second, a destination site. So for this video and quick tip, I'm going to show you how easy it would be if I wanted to clone the original site to another site. What are the use cases for this? Well, obviously, this could be part of the business plan that we show you on how to create a custom site setup that you sort of put into a frozen TV dinner format and save whenever it is that you have a client who wants the same. That way you can have about 95% of the important stuff set up and ready to go and only spend 5% of the time to get it done, yet you can charge the full amount of money. That's a great leverage point. This is also important if you're doing any kind of backup or archiving because in order to have something ready to go, it's far easier if you have a second sandbox site, especially when you're going with one of those suggestions we've given you in other tutorials, have yourself a reseller server account and keep a clone of your exact working site. That way you won't even have to worry about backups. You'll just always have a working version ready to go with all the same stuff. Either event, let's talk about it in these terms. We've got the first site here that we're gonna copy and clone I guess it's the same word, but I'm gonna say clone, and we're gonna move it to this new blank site. Normally, by the way, you'll notice that you can view this directory. Normally, I'd have an install.php file here that would prevent anybody from indexing it, but since I wanna show you that there's nothing in here, I wanted to give you this idea. Okay, so what's involved? First of all, we install the plugin, and this is called the duplicator plugin. So we go to our original site. This could be our site or that of a client. We go to plugins, installed plugins. In this case, if we're starting from scratch, we'll go to install plugins, add new. And we're gonna type in duplicator. It will find the plugin, which you see we've already installed. Normally when it's new, it'll say install now, and you'll just click that link and it will ask you for permission to do so. I've already done that to save a little time. So now we'll see once it's installed and activated, which it is, that we can go ahead and set up some of the configuration. We can either click the Manage button here, or we can go right to the Duplicator tab that it sets up. And what we want to specifically do is create what's called a package. Now, I've created one already for purposes of making this video fast, but we can also use the Create New tab here. And here it's going to do a couple things to make sure that your system is actually set up and capable of doing what it needs to do. And that's really important because if you have some problems that prevent this from working, there's no point in going further unless you get those fixed. So we can name this package. Let's call this training 1WD client quick tip. Notice I'm not using unusual characters and I have all the spaces with an underscore. That's very important. It has to be the proper naming convention. I also can put some notes in here for the quick tip video. If I have many packages, that way I can store a whole number of variations. Remember, this is a really great tool if you're a designer, a freelancer, because you can set up your child theme in many different ways and then go ahead and clone it save a copy of that package, keep it in your freezer, if you will, and then you don't have to worry about constantly having a live site. You could just have it ready to put in the microwave oven, so to speak. You could choose your format. Here, zip is the most uh, readily available one. And then you've got some other things here where if it was necessary to do so, you can actually filter out other directories that might exist in the root of your site. Now, I recommended in almost every case that you don't have other stuff in the root of your uh, WordPress installation. In other words, you should have your public HTML file <clears throat> and then you've got inside of it nothing except WordPress. And I'm going to show you what that means in a second, but many times people go ahead and they clutter their directory.
do so, that causes you all kinds of problems down the road. If you do have one of those cases, you can enable filters and tell it which things to include or not include, etc. You can also go with the database that if you want, you can filter out certain tables from others. In this case, we're only using the database for WordPress, so we're going to just leave all these by default. Now the installer itself is something we're going to get to after we're done. First we're going to make a package and then we're going to make an installer. However, if you are smart enough to do so, you can prepare your installer beforehand. And I recommend you go with this option. It'll save you trouble later. What we need here is to know what are the SQL credentials that we're going to use for the new site we're going to. Keep in mind that whenever you're using this product, you need to have a blank site. In other words, it's going to nuke or overwrite everything in your directory. In fact, it's not even going to work unless you have a blank directory at your destination. So what have we done for this? Well, we went ahead to the new site and we went into the cPanel. This is the same cPanel you'll see regardless of who your host may be. This is Bluehost, which we recommend, but you can use anything from HostGator to just about anybody who uses cPanel, which is most hosts today. Now, what you need to do is to create a blank database. If you've never done this before, it's super easy. You'll go down to where the databases option is and look for the My SQL Databases button. Here you can create a new database right where it says, ta-da, create a new database. And we'll call this Quick Tip. Remember, same naming conventions have to apply. If I was making this from scratch, which I'm going to demo, I would just click Create. Once it says it's okay, I go back and you can see that we've now got a new database here called training, kind of it's Tranje, but it was supposed to be training and that's how it made it into, to Quick Tip. Now what we need is to create a user. So we scroll down to add new users and I would recommend you use a similar naming convention here. It'll be easier for you down the road. So if I call the user Tranje to Quick Tip, I can now generate a password which I've got here. I'm going to use that password. I have to check off the box that says I've copied it to a safe place. And then I've created a user. Oop, it says it doesn't like that because it's too long. So I'm going to take off one letter. Quick T. <laughs> and now I'm going to go and create a user. Okay, so I've just shown you how to create a database, create a user. Now you have to give that user permissions, and that's easier. You add them to the database. So we're going to select the user we just made, and we're going to add them to the database we just made. And when we do, we're going to be presented with all these options. Just click the box at the top that says All Privileges and make the changes. And that's it. We're done. That's all that's necessary to create a database, create a user, and assign that user the privileges they need to do everything possible. Now, if we had gone ahead and used that particular user, then we would go ahead when we're making our new package and add that person in, right? So this would be Tranje2, the database was Quick T, and this was Quick Tip, okay? And the reason that we did it that way is quite simple. We wanted to make sure that we don't have to do this step later. You don't need to worry about any of these other things here for the moment with SSL and cache, but you will want to make sure that you put the new URL in here so that it will modify all existing instances of the old URL and you won't have to do anything further. Now, let's go ahead actually, and I didn't do one thing which I should have done for this video. I'm going to go back to the step where I just created that user. So let's go to my cPanel, and I'm going to actually create a new password for that user. And the reason simply is that I did not copy that. So when you're doing this, make sure that you go ahead and copy the password so you don't forget it. Okay, so let's generate a new password. And what I'm going to do here is, this is 1WD client. I'm going to change this to quick tip. Let's actually make it here. Let's make it Spence. Okay, so I'm going to generate a new password. I'm going to copy this this time. Normally I would say save this somewhere if you have, let's say, a Google Doc or somewhere else, just so you'll have it conveniently handy. Okay, I create the user. Oops, I already used that, so let me create something else. Let's call it tip2. Generate a password. Let's 
that time I pasted the password. Create the user, good to go. Okay, now I'm going to assign that new user tip2 to the quick tip database, just as I showed you before. Okay, good. Now we're good to go. So now I'm going to make sure that when I go ahead and use this, I have the right user. And we just change that to tip2. So I've got quick to is the database, tip2 is the user. Let's make our package. It doesn't take that long. Scan is good, everything's great. So now I can go ahead and build the package. And all I'm going to need to do here, it's really simple. It's taking maybe a minute and a half. It's probably 20, 30 megabytes for this particular site. If you have a big site, it could be bigger. Now, what I want to do is download all packages. I could have just the installer downloaded or just the archive downloaded. I'm going to do all packages. And now, again, if I need to, I can click here, which is download the installer. Click here to download the archive. So these two files are what I'm going to now add to my new blank site. So I go back over to my cPanel and go to home. And then I can use the file manager that's built in. I just open that up in the root and I want to go to public HTML. Here you can see from my other experiments, I've already got files in there. So I'm going to delete those two. And now I'm going to upload the two new ones I just created. So I go ahead and I want to use the upload button, choose the files. And here I'm going to take installer2, which is the last one, and actually it's only going to allow me to do one at a time. So I'm going to upload first the archive one, which is 30 megabytes. And you might notice too that in my little directory there, it had a bunch of stuff that was duplicated, like installer, installer1, installer2. Whenever you're working with downloading files, if you're on Mac especially, it's just going to take files with the same name and add sequential numbers. You probably know that already, but I just wanted to remind you, make sure that you take the proper installer file if you're doing this or delete the old ones so that it doesn't cause that kind of confusion. When I'm doing these tutorials, sometimes I have a lot of stuff in one directory. Okay, so now this is complete. Let's go back and do the installer PHP file. We see that it's here. So let's upload again. I'm going to pick the last one that I did, which is the installer 2. That's done. Okay, so now the fun begins. If we go to the site here, all we need to do is add on to the end of the new site slash installer PHP. And if everything is proper, and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, we should be able to see this. Now let's find out what the problem may be. So let's go over and double check in our file manager that we've got the files we need. The problem is that naming convention. So let's go fix that part of this problem and you know I'm kind of doing this little tongue-in-cheek because we both know that I do enough of these videos that what I like to do sometimes is actually stumble into accidents that I think regular folks like maybe you are gonna have and this is one of them so I did that kind of tongue-in-cheek to prove to you this is a common mistake just be looking for that kind of a problem if you've got the wrong name on the file you're uploading you can't address it when it's live on the site now when I reload we'll get to the installation page. And here's where we can go ahead and add what we need to with that password. Remember I'd copied that? So we're gonna also, if we have already another database, the need to remove tables. But I don't think we have that problem here because this is a brand new database. So let's test the connection. It says database found fail. Let's go and see what the reason may be. We have the name of the database as tronj 2 quick and tronj2 tip2. Let's go ahead and double check that we've got that in there. We've got the database as tronj2 quick tip and we've got two users. Let's make sure that we've got that and I see that's wrong. Okay, so now we're going to change it. Again, a little tongue-in-cheek, but I want you to understand this is an advanced kind of a plugin. You really have to be super careful about the naming convention. Now we have the success. Okay, so I've given you two little quick tips there about making sure that the files you upload have the proper naming convention and that once you actually set up your installer, you have to also use the proper naming convention. Now we can go ahead and do what we need to by clicking this button here for you've read all the warnings. This is telling you it's going to nuke 
your site at the destination. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could lose everything you have on that root uh, directory. Really, really high consequences, so be careful. Run the deployment. One last warning. And now we've got it set up. What I like to do at this point is click the run update, which makes sure that everything is functional. There's no errors, which we're good. No updates needed. We can save the permalinks, which we'll also go ahead and make sure we can log in right away. And then you can test the site, which is just the same thing. It launches the site and lets you see it. And here we go. Now this is the exact site that we had come from over here, except now you'll notice that we're at training2.1wdclient.com and we can log in and use it as usual. So hopefully you've taken away from this a couple big uh, important steps. First of all, we have the ability to just instantly create a backup of the site and download it to our local hard drive. That's important because even if you're just doing this one time, you might be able to reuse that later as a file to install Again, your frozen TV dinner, right? If you want to store your local versions of all the varieties of themes and things you've created using, let's say, Responsive Labs app, this is a great way to do it. It's free. It's not an ongoing service. No hassle. You can also use this for immediately cloning or copying an entire site from one server to another. I recommend you check this out. It's got an outstanding record here. At the time we're doing the video, it's got 600 five-star ratings. The author is Corey Lemmy, and I hope I am not saying the name wrong, Lamel. And um, although I always love to see authors that have more information, this is just terrific. And the complete details are available at lifeinthegrid.com. So I highly recommend you check this out. This is less of a quick tip than a full tutorial. But either way, hope you've gotten some value here. As always, this is Spence, the evil genius. I'll see you next time.